We welcome those of you that just finished watching Florida State and Florida here at Orleans Arena. John Shelby, Jay Billis just getting it started. It's the Las Vegas Invitational Championship game, and the running Reds off to a fast start. Moser misses a three, and Kendall Marshall will push it the other way. Strictly jumper will go. Jay, this is going to be an up and down game. Well, UNLV likes to run. Dave Rice played on the 1990 championship team for Jerry Tarkanian. They want to get up and down the floor. Referee saying it last touched Mike Moser before it went into the backcourt. Now, Pick Russell says North Carolina basketball. 15.37 to go in this one. Take a look at the brackets for the Las Vegas Invitational. UNLV winning yesterday, getting past a good defensive USC team. And North Carolina forcing 25 turnovers and getting the win over South Carolina. John Shelby, Jay Billis with you here courtside. And, well, this one early on, great atmosphere, a lot of Carolina fans, and, of course, the running revs on this town. Well, UNLV has gotten off to a really fast start, largely because of the three-point line. They really like to push it. And UNLV's got four different guys that can bring the ball up court. Even Mike Moser, their leading rebounder, averaging 13 rebounds a game. He's already got four defensive rebounds. When he grabs a rebound, he just brings it up court himself. And if you don't lock and trail and stay on the hip of some of these shooters like Oscar Belfield, he's already knocked down two threes they've got three threes knocked down in this game they keep shooting like that it's going to open up some drives to the basket as well well speaking of driving we go one-on-one -on -one and Kendall Marshall has been such a key for North Carolina well, I don't think any point guard has been better early on in the season than Kendall Marshall has been you can see averaging over 11 assists per game that is second in the nation and he's good in transition good in the half court if you get open he will absolutely find you he made some magnificent passes against South Carolina in the semifinal of this event and he probably should have had 20 assists. There were some plays that his teammates didn't finish where he was able to find them for some really fairly easy opportunities. Career-high six steals as well in that win over South Carolina. And the running Reds told you they like to move it up and down the court, but the three ball has been a big part of it early. Uh, whether it's been o Oscar Belfield or in this case, the lefty Anthony Marshall, they're getting their feet set. Right there shooting behind Mike Moser, just on a little step behind. And Belfield can load it up quickly. He's a point guard. They've got different guys that can bring the ball up court and initiate offense, uh, especially Marshall and Belfield. And they are certainly not afraid to put up a quick shot. If they get an opening in transition, an opportunistic three, they're going to pull the trigger on it. You see they've already pulled the trigger on six threes in this game. So North Carolina basketball down five. We're at Orleans Arena. So not technically a home game for UNLV. Fans have been loud so far. It looks like Harrison Barnes is wide open on that flex cut underneath this mystery. And they travel on Zeller. Zeller's getting banged around in the post by Bryce Masamba. He's got a height advantage, but Masamba is big, strong, and he is their best post defender. Well, that's what Zeller's so good at. When the ball goes in the post, he can knock it away, break contact, get around in front. Kick to the corner. And a rebound for Barnes. Strickland almost lost it. They tried to find Henson. It's a takeaway. Marshall has it. North Carolina's been a little loose with the ball. They threw one out of bounds a few possessions ago, and that on a simple post pass just taken away. And Mike Moser has taken some threes that he'd probably be better off right now giving up and getting into the post where he could face up and drive. So Stanbeck deflect that away from Barnes. That'll be an interesting matchup in this game. Belfield's doing a nice job putting pressure on Marshall. And UNLV is switching a lot of exchanges. They can switch one through four. Carolina cold early on. Knocked away. Here comes Barnes. Three on one. Strickland. And one. Terrific use of the left hand by Dexter Strickland. Now, North Carolina's got such good hands, especially Kendall Marshall. He knocks so many balls away from ball handlers, but you can see just a terrific job of using his body to shield the defender, Anthony Marshall. 
got the contact, used the left off the glass to finish the play. That's a big time play to be able to get a three point opportunity out of it. New Jersey native played his high school ball at the power of St. Patrick. And with the free throw, Carolina within two. North Carolina is a team that can go on runs. They don't get rattled very easily. Field hesitation as they move it to Marshall. It's a good pass by Moser. North Carolina put good pressure on the shot. Barnes. And they say offensive foul. For a moment, like Barnes got grabbed from behind. I think he did. Good shot fake. It looked like he got the ball, but that was a good job to step in and take that charge. That's where Barnes would be better off. Just pulling up for a short jumper. Usually whatever Harrison Barnes does off one dribble is pretty darn good. He's really good off one dribble. A lot of contact underneath on rebounds. You have to be strong and go after the ball with both hands. And that's something that North Carolina, I think, can do a much better job of. That's, a, that's a, their work on the glass. They played against Michigan State, got out-rebounded, especially in the first half, and got beat up on the offensive glass. And they gave up a lot of rebounds to South Carolina in a game that had a lot of misses by South Carolina. The thing that's interesting is on paper, you would think they'd be the type of team that would rebound well, right? Well, I think they will. It's just something they can do better. I mean, they're a good rebounding team, but I think they can be a great one. Oh, Marshall! The throwdown and the foul. What a play. Anthony Marshall, the Las Vegas native. Look at that. Marshall's got the ability to knock down perimeter shots, but he's really a driver first. And it's imperative that you keep him in front. But with the ball screen, he was able to turn that corner and nobody stepped in. And Roy Williams has got to be upset that someone was able to drive all the way from the three-point line and get to the rim without anyone stepping in to block a shot or to take a charge. Team, you want to avoid middle drives and straight line drives. You want to be able to angle those drives out. And that was nothing but a straight line to the basket for Anthony Marshall. And he finished it with authority. What a catch. And it's taken away by UNLV. Man, Henson last down low. up the floor. He wants the tempo to continue to be high. Harrison steps back and drills with the freshman at five threes in the win over South Carolina. At 19 points and he was fouled hard at the end of the game. Actually went into the stanchion on UNLV's end of the court. Nice hands. And Harrison charged with the foul. P.J. Uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, good shooter, and he is strong, 6'5", 220. Dave Rice, first season, came over an assistant at BYU, but a former player. He is the first former player to coach at UNLV. First former Rebel. And underneath... They get the foul on Quintrell Thomas, who's checked in. That was a nice-looking play out of their elbow series. Just a little drive and throwback after a screen right at the elbow. Got Sandback. A pretty open three right about the spot. He hit that three over John Henson before. Let's see if Carolina goes inside to Henson on this play. Most lost it. But Kendall Marshall on the bench now, so Strickland runs the point. Off balance and hits it to two. 
Dexter Strickland didn't have one of his better games against South Carolina, but he has made some really nice plays in this one. Thomas, an air ball. Strickland, Bullock, and the finger will go. A nice pace by Dexter Strickland. Didn't go too fast, used the free throw line as a stop sign, and when he did, he was able to find Bullock for the easy layup. Dave Rice wants timeout. It's down to a one-point game, 11-11 to go first half. Back here in Las Vegas, UNLV leading it by a point, 11.03 to go here in the first half. And the pace has been quick in this one. Well, transition basketball usually means offense, but in this game it also means defense as well. You have got to get back. Get back, stop the ball, get into the paint, and then build out from there because both North Carolina and UNLV can really hurt you in full court, whether it's after a turnover or after a miss, and sometimes after a make. Both these teams want to run. They want a high-possession game. And UNLV has come out firing in this one. When they have an open three, they don't have any problem taking it. And look how difficult it is to get the ball in bounds when you've got John Henson with his 7-4 wingspan, especially with a guard taking it out. Got to be as tough to inbound against as anybody in the country. And instead of thinking about scoring, you're thinking about getting it in. Marshall steps back, and then it's out of bounds. That will be North Carolina basketball. And that's the kind of shot that North Carolina wants to force UNLV into. They don't want to give them threes. They want to give them contested twos. And that was a hotly contested two and really a bad shot by Marshall. Barnes puts it on the deck in the pull-up. That was smooth. That's Harrison Barnes off that one dribble, John, that we were talking about before. He puts it down with one dribble. He's a really dangerous player. That is one skilled young man. Hawkins, this three wouldn't go as they push up ahead. How about that rebound and out by Henson? That'll be on the move, Justin Hawkins. Got himself a fine game, 10 points in the win over USC, and was the main guy defending Mo Jones, the player I know you like on USC. It was only 5'7", but Maurice Jones he had 28 points against South Carolina in the, semi in the uh, third place game. Made 7 of 7 from the three-point line, and Hawkins did a tremendous job on him yesterday. Up tomorrow night, Feast Week presented by Lowe's continues 9 Eastern, the 76 Classic ESPN 2, St. Louis and Oklahoma. It'll also be streaming live on WatchESPN.com in Oklahoma. Of course, the landing spot for former running Rebel head coach Lon Kruger, who left Dave Rice a very nice team. Sure did. They've won 20 games in five years in a row. Ron ran a lot of switching man to man, and they've kept some of those principles in. Right there, Belfield wanted the foul. He went down far. Henson, short on the shot, and it's out of bounds. You can see the terrific timing of Kendall Marshall. People talk about the fact that he may not be a a superior athlete but he's got timing great hands and just knows how to play you, know, you mentioned the six steals that he had against south carolina and he got so many deflections this is wallace kendall wallace very good three-point shooter now lopez up the under the shot was blocked but it hit the baseline off of Zeller. Three on the shot clock, and it's Vegas basketball. Well, usually, Tyler Zeller wouldn't let the ball get in to Lopez like that without knocking it away, or at least giving that an opportunity. He did a nice job of staying big and keeping his body between Lopez and the bucket. And they get a bump underneath. And Roy Williams frustrated with the call from John Stigliano. Should be. That was a clean block. 
the call was late, which I don't mind. There's nothing wrong with a late whistle as long as the right whistle, but that was a clean block. There was no contact there. In fact, that was more of an offensive foul because Lopez used his right arm to shield the block shot. Any contact that was there was created by Lopez. So well, the officials miss it once in a while. They miss that. So Carlos Lopez, native of Puerto Rico, will go to the line. One of the guys that gives them size. I'll tell you one thing with UNLV, it's a very experienced group. Nothing but juniors and seniors basically in this rotation with the exception of Lopez and Moser who's a big impact guy on the boards and Moser sat out last year after transferring from UCLA originally committed to Arizona and Roy Williams two national championships and over five and over nine. a little frustrated right now Underneath, Zeller shot blocked. Great save by Hawkins, and the Rebels with a chance to retake the lead. Oh. Offensive foul. And Tyler Zeller takes a ton of charges. You can see a terrific pass, and this is something where I think Tyler Zeller can get a lot stronger. Now that's a play. That shot was blocked by essentially a guard, Justin Hawkins. And that's where I think the Zeller can power through and still finish that play. I mentioned Tyler Zeller last night. Uh, John Henson was the ACC Defensive Player of the Year, but the award they give out for their Team Defensive Player of the Year, the Carmichael Cobb Award, he won. So the league gave it to Henson, and the team gave it to, to Zeller. Well, Henson blocks more shots, and he does a lot of that. That was really good execution on the out-of-bounds play. But Tyler Zeller's always in the right spot. He's one of those guys that's a tremendous help defender. You know, he's always moving his feet. He talks very well. Marshall just couldn't finish. And they get Barnes with an offensive foul. Now they break it up down low. Carolina by a deuce or under eight timeout. And John Henson, the good look underneath for who else? Kendall Marshall. You're watching ESPN's Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. Good one so far here in Las Vegas. Number one, North Carolina, leading by two. The Las Vegas invitation, a part of Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. And Two of the great programs, all-time winning percentage. Kentucky is number one, but these programs play second and fourth all-time. Carolina, almost 74% of their games end up with a Tar Heel victory, and the running Rebels, what a great program. It's really an amazing program. Both of these programs have been fabulous. They actually played in 1977 in the Final Four in Atlanta. That was the year that Marquette and Al McGuire cut the nets down. That was really the first time I was aware of UNLV and how great it was back when they had Reggie Fias and Eddie Owens and just those great teams. Belfield drills a three. He's got nine. This UNLV team is primarily a drive and kick team. They want a lot of spread pick and rolls. They want to get middle drives. And you really have to get up on them because of their ability to shoot the three. But then again, that's going to open up some drives. So you really have to be disciplined defensively. It's a little bit easier to get up and pressure and get out to shooters when you've got John Henson and Tyler Zeller back there to erase some defensive mistakes you may make. Those are all over Henson out. And Mike Moser thought he had long arms. Zeller and the foul. Nice move by the big guy spinning baseline. He's so skilled. He can shoot that jump hook over either shoulder. Bryce Masamba just bumping him with that lower body and really that's what a lot of post guys do they try to foul you with their chest I think officials are becoming more accustomed to seeing that. 
Tank completes a three-point play. Tar Heels by a point. One of the things as well with Vegas, Belfield and Marshall kind of act as a two-headed point guard. Both guys can run it. And a foul on Tyler Zeller underneath. Now, Roy Williams a little bit upset. It's hard when the big guy is backing you down. The ball went into Masamba. Then there was a split out on the perimeter. And Masamba was just kind of dislodging the defender, Tyler Zeller. And, and I know a lot of players playing post defense is saying, wait a minute now. I'm entitled to that space, too. If he's going to bump me back and dislodge me, I've got the right to fight for that spot. But it's just it, post calling the post is really difficult for officials. Masamba can't make the front end of the one and one. That last foul was Zeller's third team foul number nine on UNC. Vegas 16 fouls. Offensive fouls. Masamba got there on Henson. Well, John Henson tried to drive to get away from the overplay. And, but any time that Henson's got to put the ball on the floor twice to get to the basket, there's a good chance that it's going to be a charge. Well, that was a really nice move by Chase Stanback. Just kind of a bump back. Lob attempt for Henson. Masamba got in the way and he's charged with the foul. Take a look at Chase Stanback right here. He takes Harrison Barnes, tries to stay between him and the ball, and he just bumps back. Kind of nudges him and uses that glass so effectively. He also started out at UCLA, played on the 2008 Final Four team, coached by Ben Hallen, the third Final Four in three years for the Bruins. Well, if this UNLV team has a, an L.A. flavor to it with the likes of Belfield and Stanback and obviously as well Justin Hawkins. And yeah, they always have, even back under Tarkanian, they really recruited Los Angeles well. Marshall up and under, not able to spin it home. Out of bounds, UNLV basketball. Well, there is a fight for every loose ball, whether it's off a missed shot, somebody knocks it away or deflects it. And Kendall Marshall really getting bumped as he's going into the lane. Good defense by Anthony Marshall. Look, Harrison Barnes puts his ankle there. Check in with him and see if he's all right. Stand back with the ball fake and hits the jumper. A really nice inside outside basketball. Moser usually likes to face up and drive when he catches it, but that was a good kick. Marshall is penetration. Jumper for Strickland. He must have like a GPS in his head that tells him where everybody is. <laughs> it's remarkable. He knows where every player is on the floor. Belfield deep. Harrison <laughs> Barnes looks like he's in a little bit of pain over there. Well, that's a nice move by John Henson. Got the angle, good little feed. The pass was made not just to Henson, but away from the defense. And I think they need to go into John Henson even more. Back and forth we go at Orleans Arena. Good look inside. Thomas has his shot rejected, but Marshall regathers, and Mosier is fouled. So Mosier will go to the line with a chance to give him the lead. Here's Harrison Barnes. Looked like he twisted that right ankle when he was going for that loose ball. Couldn't really tell. Yeah, he just kind of rolled it over there. It happened so fast, but he's clearly in pain. And got a towel over his head over on the bench right now.
He had a terrific game against South Carolina. Very efficient. Last night at 21 points. Got to the free throw line 10 times. He is their leading scorer. He's also an excellent defender. He can guard multiple spots on the floor. Guard in the post, out on the perimeter. Where do you want to see him go here? Well, they're running one of their box sets. And well, that young man is a big time talent. DJ Hairston coming off a 19 point performance against South Carolina. He's looking more and more comfortable. And he plays on both ends. He, he is a pretty good defender as well. Hairston on stand back right now. up in Henson's hands. North Carolina by two. The last play you can see the drive and kick. That's what they want to do. So you got to stay in front of them. Oh, Marshall at three. He doesn't do a lot of that. He got off to a rough start shooting the ball this year. Going into the South Carolina game, he's only shooting about 28-29%. He shot up in the 40s last year. And Dave Rice calls timeout. 3.48 to go first half and a close one here in Las Vegas. Back inside Orleans Arena, you see the colors. North Carolina traveled very well, and obviously the running Rebels, not technically at home, but the Blues and the Reds contrasting one another. It's got a little bit of that Kentucky... And Indiana game feel or Kentucky Louisville. And well, they're going to get that Kentucky North Carolina feel on Saturday. Marshall launches. Nothing but net. Anthony Marshall. Well, it wasn't like he wasn't guarded. Reggie Bullock was right there. Just gave him a little bit of space. Harrison is fouled. North Carolina going back to the same play that they ran for P.J. Harrison for that last three. Smart coaching by Roy Williams. Well, North Carolina doing it from deep, and the Heels leading it by two. Well, back here at Orleans Arena, a two-point game in the freshman P.J. Hairston at the line. And people talk about North Carolina. Will they shoot it well enough from three? This is one of the guys they'll look to along with Reggie Bullock. Reggie Bullock and also uh, Harrison Barnes. Those three are the best three-point shooters on this team. But I think P.J. Hairston adds a, a completely different dimension. You know, big, strong, guards really well and has terrific range. He can catch and shoot. He can put it on the deck. He's got a great future. He's got a great present, but he's got a great future ahead of him. Harrison Barnes back in the game. Even with that ankle in, a nice move by Oscar Belfield. A really nice back cut by Belfield against the pressure. Barnes fading away and hit him. I think that ankle's okay. He is just so effective off one dribble. He just steps into that shot so nicely and rises up, has great form. He takes more than one dribble. I think he's less effective. Where he likes to face up and drive. Goes around. Henson pulls up. He goes after every ball on the glass. Barnes fading away short. It's a really tough down. Oh, nice look inside, but Moser couldn't convert. Henson is fouled there by Marshall, and he'll shoot two. Well, tomorrow, 7 o'clock Eastern, the Rice Classic Championship game. That'll take place 
on ESPN2 with Lake Buena Vista, Minnesota, and Dayton. 7 Eastern ESPN2. And it'll also be streaming live. Watch ESPN.com. Minnesota won a, a tough game against Indiana State the other night. It's a team that's got a really formidable front line. If they get really good guard play and stay healthy, you know, Tubby Smith has got another NCAA tournament team. Trevor Mbakwe and Rob Sampson the third. Mbakwe started out at Marquette and just has gigantic hands. Another guy that thinks that every rebound belongs to him. Speaking of Marquette, UNLV will get the services of Reggie Smith, the transfer from Marquette. That'll be in the spring semester. Bellfield rounds it home. It's a two. And he's got 13. Yes, he confident. And 14 last night. He has been making them all over the floor. Hawkins a rebound. Stand back for the lead. Well, that was a, a good look at a three. And a nice find by Hawkins. Talking about nice finds. It just doesn't stop. Kendall Marshall threading the needle. And able to find underneath James Michael McAdoo. Well, first of all, nobody picks up the ball. Everybody trying to get back. But he just whistled it right past the right elbow of Lopez. You're open. He's going to find it. What incentive to run the floor? Well, Kendall Marshall is going to have a 20 assist game this year. It's just a matter of time. He's already had 15, 15, and 14. And the last two games, he's gone 15 and 14 in the assist column. It's almost like the defenders are cones. Just in place. <laughs> and he's just weaving the basketball through the cones. Just extraordinary vision. You know, they talk about point guards seeing a pass ahead. And he just sees everything out there. It's almost like he's looking at a chessboard and it's in that kind of slow motion. Good right. hand, Strickland. able to get the garbage and lay it in. It's unselfish. And a really nice job by Bullock of running the floor. They didn't give up on the play. They had the two-on-one. He kept running. And a foul call. And really good hands here by Dexter Strickland. And it's a, basically a two-on-one, and Strickland would normally go up with that, but if not for the fact that Reggie Bullock didn't give up on the play, that would have been a turnover. You know, Henson couldn't handle the pass, and just because he ran and hustled, Bullock bailed him out. That pass to Bullock was actually deflected by his own man, and he was still able to, to gather it in. Desmond Hubert touched it. Do you think Strickland was trying to throw that to Bullock and... Uh, and Henson got it. I thought he was trying to give it to Henson. Either way, he ran. Bullock ran. That was a smart play. Control. Thomas will check back in. Lopez will grab a seat. Four point game. And basically, shot clock and game clock are identical. Set. But Marshall creates something. From the elbow. Rebound back four. And that'll do it. First half, close one. Number one, North Carolina. Roy Williams team leading at the break by four. Great atmosphere inside Orleans Arena. Time for our halftime report. We send it to the studio in Steve Buna. You're watching ESPN's Feast Week, presented by Lowe's.
Back inside Orleans Serena at the break. It's number one North Carolina leading UNLV by four. Las Vegas invitation, a part of Peace Week presented by Lowe's. Hi, folks, John Chomby, Jay Billis. You're number one in the country. You know you're going to have the target on your back, and this is kind of that quintessential game against a, you know, a tough crowd, a pseudo home game for UNLV. But Carolina did well. Yeah, they withstood it, and this is a real contrast in styles. Both teams want to run, but UNLV is a team that drive and kick. The half their shots in the first half were from three point range. They hit six of them, and North Carolina is a team that's more efficient. They get the ball inside. They score their points in the paint. They shot 57 percent in that first half, and I thought Dexter Strickland was one of the guys that had uh, one of the better first. He went 4 or 4, had 9 points, but they got contributions from everybody. And for UNLV, Oscar Belfield really led the way with 13 points, knocking down some open shots. Yeah, they hit some threes. Let's took, take a look at our highlights, and Harrison Barnes sustained a bit of an injury in that first half. Well, Harrison Barnes twisted that right ankle, but came back right afterwards. He was out for a while. Always love coming back and cringing after you get back from halftime, but... He came back, one dribble, knocks a shot down. He had four points in that first half, limited obviously by the ankle injury. And Oscar Belfield, a senior, just the most trustworthy player on this team. Doesn't make a lot of mistakes, really high basketball IQ. Knocked down those 13 points, came out firing. A little step behind here, in that kind of the right corner. He knocked down three of six threes, went five of 10 in the first half of those 13 points. Vegas basketball to start the second half. Nice look. Lopez feeds inside and finds Moser. A little bit too easy. Barnes, there's that one dribble. That's probably a shot he could get later in the shot clock. Good pass. Lopez cleans it up after the march of miss. Much like they did in the first half, UNLV has come out and thrown the first punch of the second half. Tyler Zeller's got to be a little bit careful. He's got three fouls. Out of bounds, 19 in the shot clock. Zeller's so skilled and still needs to play a little bit stronger in the post. Lopez and Zeller banging down low, feed to Henson. Five on the shot clock, Tom Hill basketball. Henson got single coverage in the post, guarded by Mike Moser, but caught the ball off the lane. And he's being held. Still almost got a touch. Oh, two shots at it, couldn't put it down. Rebels a chance to take the lead. Moser in close. And then he fouls Henson. The UNLV bench saying that there was basket interference that John Henson took that ball off. But you can see, this is a little bit late for what I wanted to show, that Henson was being held as he came around that Dexter Strickland screen and just wasn't able to finish that play. But the crowd now getting a little bit upset, but looked like that was uh, was basket interference by Henson when he took that ball at least near the rim. Looked like it was still on it. Tied up at 42. Just underway, second half. The Las Vegas Invitational Championship game. John Chavi, Jay Billis. UNLV has three guys that can really guard the ball. Zeller blocked twice. And eventually it's Belfield that comes away. Stand back to pull up Rebels lead. How nice was that? First to find and then stand back. Putting the ball on the deck. Bonds then Henson, neither could hit. And UNLV by a deuce. Battlefield gets another, he's got 16. The Rebel fans loving it. 
Not technically a home game. Not at Thomas and Mack, but fans getting into it. And right now, Oscar Belfield, the most confident player on the floor. Belfield on that last shot, just a little jab step, created some space and went straight up for that jumper. He's been making some good decisions. I mean, we've talked about John this being a drive and kick team. These threes that they're knocking down should open up some driving lanes, and I think that UNLV needs to take advantage of it. They need to put the ball on the deck, spread it out and drive a little bit. That hit. North Carolina seems like they're settling for the first shot. They're just not making the biggest guy. Got this Vegas up eight. Lopez spinning travel. Seems like in the second half, North Carolina has spent far more time on defense than on offense because they've taken a lot of quick shots. And the quick shots have not been good ones. You can see they're 0 of 7. Now Tyler Zeller got a couple inside block where they got the ball down low in the paint. And in the last couple games, he's had more block than knocked out of his hands than I can remember from him. Now even that prior possession, it came down in a very quick shot from Dexter Strong. Layup wouldn't go. Barnes able to save it off of standback. Even that drive by Kendall Marshall, you can argue he got fouled. He had a lane to the basket, but he really did. Everything came off of the dribble where the pass wasn't even made. So they really didn't make the UNLV defense work at all. And that's rather unlike North Carolina, a very good offensive team. Bangs in on the Samba. So those are just really difficult shots. They're not going side to side, not making the defense work. Moser is fast. UNLV fans loving it here at Orleans Arena. Second half has been all UNLV, literally, Jay Billis. Well, Oscar Belfield's knocked some shots down, and North Carolina has taken a lot of challenge jump shots very early in the shot clock. Nice follow there by Carlos Lopez, and a terrific job of going against the grain by Chase Stanback. And a nice little jab step to create space. And this is probably the one questionable shot by Mike Moser, but when you're, things are going well for you offensively, those kind of shots go in. And North Carolina has been unable to answer in large measure because I think they've done things too quickly. They really haven't made UNLV defend in the second half. Well, every every possession has been only 10 seconds long for North Carolina. They haven't gotten good shots out. Roy Williams would like to see his team get to the line a little bit more as well. well this young man, Mike Moser, is a terrific player. He does just about everything well. He can step away and shoot it. Got another double-double. He's one of the top rebounders in the nation. Ten-point game. Largest lead for UNLV. Marshall is bumped on the floor by Hawkins. Marshall is... A strong guard. He's not going to blow by you with tremendous speed. He uses his strength to get by you. Nice. Bullock for the bucket. Caught UNLV napping. That was pretty. Moser tries another. Too easy right there. Well, that's what happens when you take a questionable shot. I don't think anybody thought that Moser was going to pull the trigger on that. He gives up a layup. Marshall backs up for a moment. Stand back to rebound. 
from the Rebels, leading by six. Three point shot has been huge. Stand back, give it a corral. That pass and lay it in. He's got 11. What a catch. Out of bounds. And it'll be North Carolina basketball. Nope. Change the call. Well, that was the right call. The ball went off of Bullock as he was headed out of bounds. That pick Russell came over and told John Stigliano that it went off of Bullock. UNLV's got a healthy lead right now. They need to run good offense here. There's the pick and roll. They run a lot of pick and roll. Got the hook. Now they get Masamba with an offensive foul. That's his fourth. I'm not sure that's exactly where UNLV wanted to go. As soon as he got that chicken wing out and hooked James Michael McAdoo, that, I mean, that was so obvious. But giving it to him off the lane, I don't think it's the right play. And Samba's a really good post defender. Having him out of the game puts UNLV at a little bit of a disadvantage inside. But he's not an offensive player. He's a guy that you want to clog up the lane, defend, rebound for you, set screens. Seems like he's bothered Zeller in this game. I can't remember a time when Zeller has, has had the ball knocked away as often as in the last two games. It happened quite a bit against South Carolina as well. And James Michael McAdoo going to the rim. He's fouled. North Carolina's been out of sorts offensively in the second half. Zeller just gives a little screen as McAdoo is taking the ball along the baseline. Helped, him, helped free him up so he could get fouled once he got near the rim. He didn't get himself set on that free throw. This guy, a huge recruit, two-time Virginia High School Player of the Year. And he misses both. This is where North Carolina needs to string together some consecutive stops. Control Thomas inside. So everything's coming off of one side. So they were on the right side and stayed there. If they can move it from side to side, I think they'll get something better. And now Marshall will set it up. And he wants to take McAdoo off the dribble. He's, still, he's, still, he's telling his teammates, get out of the way. And they would have hit the shot. And Carolina up ahead. And James Michael McAdoo fou fouled again. And McAdoo did a nice job defensively to angle out Marshall so that he couldn't get a straight line to the basket and then immediately ran the floor. Well, he's got some jets. He was gone. And the best passer in college basketball, Kendall Marshall, finds him in transition. That's pretty impressive by McAdoo. See a good matchup coming up this week. Wisconsin and North Carolina in Chapel Hill and Kendall Marshall will go up against Jordan Taylor. That'll be fun. I don't think there'll be as many possessions in the game as there is in this one. <laughs> well, with the Badgers involved, that usually doesn't happen. Oh, Ryan doesn't like when they shoot off one pass in layup lines, let alone a game. <laughs> Marshall hangs and hits. Oh, nice catch. And for the third straight possession, James Michael McAdoo will go to the line. Marshall puts so much pressure on your transition defense. Even after a score, he pushes it up. And terrific job here by Marshall. That's a tough shot. He was able to knock it down. But you've got guys running into each other, but you also have Tar Heels running the floor. And Marshall, because he passes ahead, 
Now in transition, he can be every bit as fast or even faster at times than Ty Lawson used to be at that position. Now Lawson was just a bullet with the ball in his hands, dribbling it up court. But Marshall passes it ahead so effectively. Really a speedy way to get the ball up court. Another point that you made about Marshall is that extra thing, not just finding guys, he always seems to put it in the perfect spot. Yeah, you don't have to adjust anything. He puts it right in your shooting pocket. And a screen for the screener. Pretty well defended by North Carolina. Carolina's defense thought really improved last year throughout the year. I think this can be a very good defensive team. your power forward timeout Dave Rice Carolina on the move look at the big guy bounce pass Bullock and it's a five-point game you're watching ESPN's feast week presented by Lowe's well, back here in Las Vegas, the strip is all lit up. And both these teams lighting it up. UNLV leading the number one team in the country by five. The running Rebels beat USC by 11 to get here. And Carolina thumped South Carolina. It's the first meeting between UNLV and North Carolina since December of 1999. It's been a while. Some good decisions. North Carolina's on a little bit of a run. One of the ways you stop runs is by running good offense and scoring. That'll help Moser another three. His second, he's got 14 points. Ball screen throwback. Moser's knocked down a couple of those. He hasn't really been in the post much at all. Well, McAdoo is fully capable of making that shot. I'm just not sure that a turnaround jumper is the shot that they wanted. Everybody battling for that ball, just kind of bending over for it. Throwback on the last possession and Standback really spacing the floor. Harrison off the dribble. That's a two. Boy, what an answer. Standback was right on him when he after he left the floor on that shot. Play. That was a tough shot PJ Harrison just made. great championship team coming up. UNLV trying to knock off number one North Carolina leading by six. And of course Jerry Tarkanian author of that national championship back in 1990 the final four in Denver going up against Duke. Anderson Hunt drilling the three. 
And then eventually Greg Anthony, the two-handed slam. They were so good in transition. Anderson Hunt, the layup. And Jerry Tarkanian and the running reps, 103-73. Look at that team as they were able to beat two ACC foes in Georgia Tech and Duke. Larry Johnson, the leading player. Jay Billis, you were on the bench on the other side of that one. Yeah, I was a graduate assistant coach. And uh, so got whiplash watching them run up and down the floor. And actually, Dave Rice wasn't in our scouting report. But he got the game. Uh, this, that guy was on the scouting report. Plastic man. What a great player. That was a, a tremendous team. And actually, the team they had the next year in 1991, arguably, was better. Undefeated, headed to the Final Four in Indianapolis. Just a tremendous team, tremendous program. Once he tried to find Seller in that deep position, he gets fouled. Seller has been really quiet in this one. He got into foul trouble in the first half. Picked up that third foul went about midway through. And had to sit the rest of the half. We chronicled the fact that he's had some opportunities that got knocked away and he wasn't able to finish. But he did a really nice job of getting position, using his body, backing his man in, and catching it deep in the paint. First point to the second half. He's got four total. North Carolina has had to guard a lot of ball screens of late. And they're loading up the opposite side with shooters. But Zell mistimed his jump. Nice. Moser the layout from Belfield. And what a pass from Belfield. Henson is fouled by Lopez. I think that's what North Carolina needs to do. There's nine and a half minutes left in regulation. There's plenty of time. You want to have a sense of urgency, but I think you want to be methodical in going inside. That's where North Carolina has an advantage. Masamba's already got four. And that's really been you know, the way Carolina's played over the years, especially under Roy Williams. You know, wear them out and foul them. Yeah, that last foul, Lopez, his third. So Dave Rice going to the bench control. Thomas is getting set to check in. Seems like Moser has gotten every rebound in this game. If it's been available and anywhere near him, he's grabbing. He's got 13. Lopez. Now they're getting they're spreading the floor and getting into drive and pick situations, drive and drop off. North Carolina's still got to stay in front and guard off the dribble. Strickland able to collect it. Down the floor. That's a wide night feast week presented by Lowe's Continues ESPN 2. First 7 Eastern from the Old Spice Classic down in Orlando. It'll be Minnesota and Dayton. And then the 76 Classic, St. Louis and Oklahoma. The fouls have been an issue in the second half. And UNLV's got 19 fouls. Their next foul, North Carolina shooting two. And North Carolina's only got three team fouls, so they can, if they want, take a few chances down the stretch. Moser sits, he's got three. Barnes had it knocked away, but regathers. Henson had a good look at it, just couldn't knock it down. The lead is six for the running rebels. And one, Quintrell Thomas to the line. Great work by Belfield. Uh, Belfield just took Kendall Marshall off the dribble once he got past him and turned the corner and drew Tyler Zeller over, was able to drop it off. That's where Henson's got a 
rotate down a little quicker than that. Use those long arms, get in there and bother that pass. But that was a tremendous pass right underneath the arm of Tyler Zeller. Seven assists in the game for Oscar Belfield. Anytime you set a ball screen for Marshall, UNLV's just going underneath it because they know he's not going to shoot it. Loose ball, Barnes asking for time and he gets it. Good hustle by the sophomore. Well, you think they wanted the ball? Everybody on the floor for it. Harrison Barnes comes away with it. Tell you, UNLV's done a nice job withstanding a couple of North Carolina charges. And they've really done a nice job of spreading the floor. You know, they've run their ball screen offense. They're trying to get middle drives, but they've spread the floor nicely. They've started most of it on the left side of the floor, getting a ball screen, then a second ball screen. They've got shooters loaded up on the wing and in the corner deep. So if you help off, it's an open three. If you don't, Belfield can take it all the way to the basket. Chase Stanback is a terrific shooter, just able to catch that bullet that was thrown to him. And a little over pursuit by Harrison Barnes, and there he is loaded up on the opposite side off that ball screen. And Chase Stanback has a connection to North Carolina. His father, Harry Stanback, played football for the Tar Heels. About the same time, Lawrence Taylor was playing linebacker in Chapel Hill. Into Strickland. Now back to Kendall. Tough shot. And the quality of shot for North Carolina has been low in the second half. Control Thomas has done good work. Hawkins. 11 three pointers for UNLV. The lead is a dozen. The ball movement by Vegas. That was spectacular to get that open shot for Justin Hawkins. Las Vegas. It's Las Vegas Invitational Championship game part of Beast Week presented by Lowe's. And inside Orleans Arena, UNLV trying to knock off number one North Carolina, the running Rebels leading by a dozen. 7.33 to go. John Chambi, Jay Villas with you, and Tyler Zeller at the line. And UNLV has made great use of the three point line. Knocked in 11 threes thus far in the game. Their season high, 12 against Morgan State. <laughs> North Carolina, Tigers haven't really been able to find their way offensively in a second half. I think that has to do with the quality of shot that they're getting. Now, the quality of shot that North Carolina's gotten in the second half has been low. Nice kick. Strickland into the paint, goes left hand, finds a rebound. That was a big time rebound by Harrison Barnes, went up right away, and there was clear contact. Call a little bit late. He gets stand back with his first, and again, double bonus the rest of the way for North Carolina. That could be a big factor. And Harrison Barnes, two for nine in this game, but. And if you go back and look at all of his shots, I bet you seven of those nine were challenged jump shots. By challenged, I mean a hand in his face. Got a defender right on him. Now remember, he took one in the first half where 
He was on the left baseline fading away with the defender right on him. Yeah, he's, he's way too good of a shooter to go two of nine. It has to do with the quality of shot. He's taken really, really, the, the degree of difficulty, let's say, has been very high for his shot. <laughs> right. DJ Harrison, Reggie Bullock will come into the game. Strickland and Henson will sit. The success that UNLV's had in the second half has come off of pick and roll situations. And most of them have started on the left side coming to the right. Kick to the corner. Man, they've done that so well in this game. Oscar Belfield drawing attention and kicking out open threes. Well, if you come off that corner guy, he's going to be wide open, and that's been happening time and time again. Tough shot from Hairston. Here they go again. Moser came flying in, but couldn't put it down. Even that was challenged. Moser pulls it down. Now that is taking shots like it's really late in the game and they're in a desperation situation. They've got a lot of time left in this game. It's number six to go, the lead a dozen. Lopez underneath and the throw down. about that strong move. And John, I think that's what North Carolina needs to do. Continue to pound the ball inside. Moser on his hip. Just drops his shoulder, gets right around him. And not only goes to the free throw line, gets fouled, finishes the play. And this is for a conventional three-point play. So Moser's got four. He'll sit. Masamba is back in the game with his four fouls. And Lopez has three. And North Carolina's got to do a better job on the defensive end. With those ball screens they're getting hit with, they can't get caught in the switch. And the three point play for the Finds the three point play. And the lead is 11. And this is not the last time that North Carolina's going to see a lot of ball screens. Their bigs are going to be involved in those screens a lot. as Masamba after grabbing the rebound got whacked in the forehead. North Carolina went to a, a little scramble, quick trap. Vegas passed out of it quickly and well. Nobody was able to get a body on Masamba. He just took one right in the eye. Inadvertent. on the offensive end. 12 three-pointers. Marshall. Oh, they had a couple of good looks at it. Couldn't put it down. Good hands by Anthony Marshall. Henson ends up with it. 
And the foul on Hawkins. Harrison will go to the line and shoot two. You know, he's getting some great looks on the offensive end. One thing they don't want to do is to run down to the defensive end and foul. Let North Carolina score with no time going off the clock. P.J. Hairston's had a terrific trip to Las Vegas. Played really well against South Carolina. Has come back even banged up. And played really well here against UNLV. Had 19 points, including five threes against the Gamecocks. And here in this one, 15 points and three threes. Strickland will check back in and Marshall will sit. So when UNLV fouls, allows them to score, no time goes off, they get to set up a press. Now Henson on the ball. How about that split of the trap? Belfield, Marshall. Stand back with a little trouble gathering the pass that was low. A little late getting down there. Probably took a longer shot as a result of it. Henson over the back. That's number four on Henson. 347 to go. UNLV trying to knock off number one here in Las Vegas. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Lowe's, never stop improving. Audi, truth in engineering. And Pizza Hut, home of the most delicious pizza deals around, only at your Pizza Hut. Back here in Las Vegas, UNLV leading it by 9, 347 to go. Jay Billis, the three-pointer, has been a large part of the reason why the Rebels lead. For a little pick and pop for Mike Moser. He's got 16 points, 16 rebounds to go along with it. Then off the pick and roll, loading up the opposite side. Chase Stanbeck knocking it down. Moser going up against Kendall Marshall. You know, that's probably the only questionable one. And They've made 12 threes thus far in the ball game. You, know, you think back to the Elite Eight game last year for North Carolina where they lost to Kentucky. Kentucky knocked down 12 threes against the Tar Heels. Now, this is a very good UNLV team, considered one of the top in the Mountain West. And then the NCAA tournament for the last five years. Again, breaking pressure. Stand back. Seniors from LA. Yeah. got trapped in the corner, still able to get it out. Get a wide open shot. Barnes takes that one dribble and jumper is good. And Tyler Zeller just took one right in the throat. Nine point game. Harrison Barnes rolled his ankle earlier in the game, and overall, it's been a tough night for the sophomore. A lot of the shots that he's taken have been challenged. That's one of them, although not a bad shot at all. He really struggled in the second half to get what he's wanted. I'll tell you, when he has gone down into the post and called for the ball, he's made some really strong moves down there. I think that's still where, even though he just knocked that shot down, he's got 11 points in the ball game. It's not going down into the post is a good idea for him. So Oscar Belfield has really controlled this game. He's not only scored, knocking down open threes and threes in transition, but he's distributed the ball very well. He's got nine, nine assists in there. Marshall. Big rebound to Samba. That was great work by Bryce to Samba. North Carolina trying to trap when they have the opportunity. UNLV needs to attack out of those traps. It's really the only UNLV in the second half. Another three. His fourth of the game with 22 points. He has been.
being spectacular. Eric answers timeout for Roy Williams. 28 to go. And UNLV just continues to attack. Now they're not resting on this lead. They're trying to build it. And they did a nice job of using that clock. And that's just a really good pass by Marshall. Saw that Hairston was off of stand back. And instead of taking the clock all the way down, waiting a little bit longer, he just hit the open man. And stand back has been the hot hand in the second half. And so we got ourselves a 10-point game right now. John Chambi, Jay Billis. What can North Carolina do to get stops as this game goes down the stretch? Well, they've had some opportunities. You know, they haven't. They, Masamba got that offensive rebound. North Carolina wasn't able to clean that up. Uh, they have to get consecutive stops. They just can't get one stop. They've got to go down. I don't think the three-point shot is what they need to look for just yet. I think they can continue to get the ball to the rim, give themselves an opportunity to get fouled. Roy Williams' team, they tried a little bit of everything, the pressure, but Belfield and Marshall have been so good beating the traffic. Again, they get it in the front court rather easily. Part of the problem, I mean, you know, we can talk about North Carolina's defense, but they haven't scored either. That ball was just thrown up for grabs out of the, out of the trap. Strickland scooped to the hoop. That's smart. Just taking it all the way to the rim, getting the quick score. So now the lead down to eight for UNLV. Strickland's made some good decisions in this game. And the North Carolina put the scramble on, got a trap, and UNLV just threw that ball up for grabs. They got to be a lot stronger with it. Rare turnover, only 10 for UNLV. And here's UNC's schedule. You'll have that Wisconsin game coming up. Kentucky that, as well. Yeah, that game at Kentucky on December 3rd. I mean, the entire college basketball world is going to be watching that game. And then Long Beach State has a really good team on that game December 10th. Evansville has already beaten Butler uh, this season. But Long Beach State, Dan Munson's got a really, really good team. Casper Ware was the... Big West Player of the Year last year and the Big West Defensive Player of the Year. Who's the next best team after Carolina in your mind? Kentucky is. Yeah, Kentucky, Ohio State. Now, I put Syracuse up there as well. Stanford gave Syracuse quite a game in the Garden the other day. But Kentucky's probably the most talented team. They're younger than North Carolina. Uh, this is a, a terrific test for North Carolina to find out exactly where they are. And thus far, they've, you know, they've done some really good things in this game, but they've done some done some things that they need to correct as well. A lot of it has to do with offensive execution and shot selection. UNLV breaks pressure again. Wide open stand back. Moser the rebound. That's his 17th. And he is an amazing rebound. Not a good one, an amazing rebound. Moser shot block. Hairston able to save. And then Marshall steals it right back. Strickland. And he's fouled. I tell you, that type of scramble in this game, it's really been absent of plays like that. Very rarely the team's turning it over. Well, you can understand North Carolina, you know, feeling a little bit desperate, maybe turning the ball over, but UNLV has to feel like they're in control of this game. They shouldn't allow North Carolina to speed them up like that. That, that was just a really bad play to give the ball up that quickly. Teams have only combined for 22 turnovers, 12 by the Rebels, as the big guy Masamba fouls out. He was a big factor and keeping Tyler Zeller quiet in this game. And right now for UNLV, having ball handlers on the floor is important. North Carolina has to communicate, find out who they're guarding, but they also have to knock down free throws. These are free points that they're giving away. 
Early on in the season, Carolina just under 61% as a team from the line. has a nice team. He's got three guards that can initiate offense. He's got Chase Stanback that can bring the ball down. He can also knock threes down. He's got a number of different guys that can lead this team in scoring. And, and he's got a guy in Mike Moser who gets you double figure rebounds every single game. He was phenomenal on the glass in this game. 16 points, 18 rebounds for Moser. Jay, they haven't been bothered by the press or pressure in the least in this game. No, they've handled it very well. Anytime they were trapped, they made a couple of mistakes, but you know, off pick and rolls made great decisions. Their spacing was terrific off those pick and rolls. And North Carolina is going to have to work on their pick and roll defense because they're going to see an awful lot of that this year. Marshall lays it in. 35.8 to go. Steal by Bullock. Barnes misses the dunk, but he's fouled. So the clock stops. And a chance to get the lead down to two. Or down to five, I should say. One thing you don't want to do right now if you're UNLV is turn the ball over. Possession is the most important thing. And the clock. You don't have to score anymore. You just have to keep from giving that ball up. Get fouled, go to the free throw line, and salt the game away. Mosier with that foul, and he is done. Yeah, what a ball game for Mike Moser. You're going to be hearing a lot about him. He is coming into tonight, second in the nation in rebounding, leading the nation amongst players that have played as many as six games. So. This season. And Barnes, who's been a 67% free throw shooter this year, misses a big one. Well, that's something that North Carolina needs to continue to improve on is their free throw shooting. It's not a, a great free throw shooting team. UNLV 30.5 seconds away. From pulling off the win. And Jerry Tarkanian taking this one in. He doesn't miss too many games out here in Vegas. Too many home games. Like this one at the Orleans Center. And he's taking in a great one from a running Rebels perspective. Not had a ton to cheer about in the second half. 
And they'll have a lot to cheer about the rest of this year. This is a team that's fully capable of winning the national championship. If you think back to Roy Williams championship teams in 05 and 09, those teams lost four games each. Nice to the loose ball. Stand back this guy. He's really had a terrific ball game. 26 points, 10 rebounds. And they've worked so well. The pieces fitting together between Stanback, Belfield distributing, Mosier on the boards. Well, this is the way that, that UNLV wants to play. You know, they want to get up and down the floor, they want to run, but in order to run, you've got to defend. And this team defended very well in this game. Another point that you made, good choices. UNLV made good decisions, and at times Carolina did No question. I mean, it's a, you know, this is a drive and kick team. And a team that works off a of pick and roll, spreading the floor. And Roy Williams has taken all of his regulars out. And that will allow Dave Rice to do the same. Twenty one point two to go here at Orleans Arena. UNLV about to take out number one North Carolina. talking to Dave Rice right now, just telling him as soon as the game's over, he's going to take his team off to make sure that when everybody rushes the floor, everything's okay. A classy move by Roy Williams to let him know that. Now, this is a great win for this UNLV program. This is going to energize the city, send a message to Las Vegas that running rebel basketball is back. Fittingly, it ends up in Stanback's hands. Down goes number one. UNLV takes out North Carolina. Dave Rice's team played a brilliant game, drilled 13 threes. This is a UNLV team that returned four or five starters and has been to the NCAA tournament for the last five years. This is not the last that you will hear from them. This year, 90 to 80, the final here in Las Vegas. Carlos Lopez getting great minutes off the bench. Let's go over to Jay Billis, who's standing by with Dave Rice. Dave, ne needless to say, a great win for your team. Uh, assess your team performance against the number one team in the country. We were terrific tonight. We have unbelievable respect for Coach Williams and, and the Tar Heels. They have such a historic program, but our guys just work so hard. Every day, we stay together, and we truly are a team. You know, Mike Moser was spectacular on the glass. 
but you got great contributions from your guards. When you're running your pick and roll offense, drive and kick, they seem to make every right decision. Well, we know how good North Carolina is defensively, and they put such pressure on us. But uh, we just, our only agenda we play with is just try to find the open man. And tonight we were really, really good. And it's a credit to our seniors and their leadership. You know, when you talk to your team, you look at the film, what, what will you point out and say, you know, this was the difference in the game? I think it was just our resolve. But North Carolina is so good. They always make runs, and we just kept answering them. Such a big win for our program. Just so happy for our seniors like Oscar Belfield. Well, Dave, congratulations on a great win. Go enjoy Jay, it. Thank you very much. Oscar, let's get you in here. Oscar, you seem to control the game from start to finish. What, what was your thought process going into the game against the North Carolina? Uh, really just to value each possession, really take our time and really execute. We knew that they played at our pace, and we just wanted to take advantage of it. You, know, you seem to be almost a different team in the second half. You controlled every possession. And when you're running your ball screen offense, when you came off those ball screens, got a switch, whatever happened, you made every right decision. Oh, yeah. I mean, our second half, we, I mean, we're really big in the second half. And that's our thing. And we just go out there and just play hard and really take our time. How about the performances of, of Mike Moser and Chase Stanback? Mike Moser and Chase Stanback are consistent, and they bring it every day. What, what does this mean? You've been here four years. You've seen everything in this program. What does this mean for UNLV basketball? Um, this is a great thing. I mean, it's only the beginning. Well, congratulations on a great win. Thank you. Appreciate it. John, back to you. All right, Jay. The Run and Rebels are back as they beat number one North Carolina. Oscar Belfield, the senior, goes for 16 points, distributed so effectively. Nine assists, stand back 28 and 10. And North Carolina beaten out here in Las Vegas. 13 threes the story. Again, our final 90 to 80 UNLV beats number one North Carolina for Jay Billis and our entire crew. I'm John Chambi. The preceding has been an exclusive presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. UNLV wins it, and we say good night from Las Vegas. Amid all the football hysteria, number one North Carolina in poop in Las Vegas facing UNLV. This would be a game. How about Anthony Marshall over John Henson for the throw down. UNLV up early 13-9 later in the first half. Harrison Barnes going for the loose ball. He's going to roll his ankle. He would come back in. Tough shooting night for Barnes. 6 of 16, only 15. North Carolina was up four at the break, but UNLV red hot in the second half. Justin Hockett, Rebel, 13 of 32 from three. Then Chase Stanback, his fourth three of the game. He led all scores with 28, and then UNLV closing in on the upset. They're undefeated. Stanback, 7 and 0. Oh. Hey, Dave Rice is standing by with RJ Billings. We were terrific tonight. We have unbelievable respect for Coach Williams and, and the Tar Heels. They have such a historic program, but our guys just work so hard. Every day, we stay together. We truly are a team. We just, our only agenda we play with is just try to find the open man. And tonight, we were really, really good. And it's a credit to our seniors and their leadership. You know, when you talk to your team, you look at the film, what, what will you point out and say, you know, this was the difference in the game? I think it was just our resolve. But North Carolina is so good, they always make runs, and we just kept answering them. Such a big win for our program. Just so happy for our seniors like Oscar Belfield. Saturday marked the first time since 2006 that the number one ranked team lost in November. In fact, since the ESPN USA Today coaches poll began in 1997-98, only two other times has a number one ranked team lost earlier in the season. The earliest came November 11th, 1999, when unranked Iowa took out UConn at Madison Square Garden.